Next month marks one year on the job for Portland Police Chief Danielle Outlaw. In the years since she took over in Portland, Outlaw has guided officers through several large protests, which included accusations of excessive force by officers. She's also trying to fill dozens of vacant positions and is crafting a new strategic vision for the Bureau. Outlaw joins us tonight to discuss. From KGW News, this is Straight Talk. And welcome once again to Straight Talk. I'm Chris Willis. Tonight in for Laurel Porter. The Portland Police Bureau is one of the most visible public agencies in the city. We see officers patrolling our streets, expect them to show up when emergencies happen, and trust them to protect us. It is a critical role in any city. But with that responsibility comes great scrutiny from the public. Tonight, we're glad to welcome Portland Police Chief Danielle Outlaw to the show to discuss her leadership of the Bureau since she started the job last October. Chief Outlaw, thanks. We know you're busy, so thanks we appreciate yeah, your time and, and coming today. Let's start with this. We mentioned next month will be a year uh, for you, and it's obviously probably flown by. Tell us, what have you learned during your first year here in Portland? Uh, you know, I learned that you can come in with a very succinct and precise plan yeah. uh, for the upcoming year and that you quickly have to adapt yeah. according to to what's uh, thrown in your way. Portland's like no other city some say. Is there, have, you, have you had any specific big challenges you didn't anticipate? You know there's been some challenges but there's been a lot of positive as well. Yeah. Uh, I will say as I get further and further in my role as police chief I'm understanding that there is a clear need for me to differentiate or even just explain further what my role as police yeah. chief is sure. and where the police lie in the system, the yeah. criminal justice system, because there are a lot of uh, societal issues that we deal with, complex issues that we as law enforcement officers here in the city deal with, but we're not necessarily the ones that should be looked toward for the solution to these problems. Yeah, it leads right into this next question. And, and we were talking earlier in Portland, different kind of government here. We have the bureau form of government. The mayor serves as the police commissioner and you report directly to Ted Wheeler. You said something recently while interviewing for the job. You asked Mayor Wheeler if he would support you and your decisions. We're almost a year in. Do you feel that he has? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he has made it very clear um, that he provides strategic direction and vision. But when it comes to subject matter expertise, any uh, tactical decisions that need to be made, that he relies upon yeah. not only me through the chief uh, in the position of the chief, but the Portland Police Bureau to yeah. do that. And he's empowered me to do that, and I appreciate that. Great confidence he has publicly stated many times he has. Okay, earlier this summer, the protesters created the camp. Let's talk about this because it got so much news coverage and, and so much attention. Uh, down at the ICE building in Southwest Portland, Mayor Wheeler had instructed the Police Bureau take a hands-off approach to the protest. Officers were, were instructed only to respond to calls where there was an immediate threat. Otherwise, let the federal police handle any issues at ICE. Reflecting back now, do you think that was the right decision? You know, and to clarify that, the, the plan surrounding that was the ICE facility has its own law enforcement resources. Yep. So allow the Federal Protective Service and all of the other federal law enforcement agencies to deal specifically with the ICE facility and anything um, in, in close proximity to that building. Anything else surrounding that, if there was a potential to a threat of harm to property mm -hmm. or to life, anyone's physical security, absolutely we would respond made that very clear uh, to our federal folks down there as well. So, you know, I, I don't want folks to think that we said it's a complete hands-off approach and we're not coming at all because we did. Right. Uh, but again, we want it there to be very clear lines in roles and responsibilities as to how that was dealt with. And that was as someone who was down there uh, close to a dozen times, we saw uh, this, this camp was on city property and we saw assaults of news reporters and drug use and a lot of the human waste they'd collected dumped right down the city storm drains and they ran off that local family that was trying to run the business there with the happy camper. At what point does it become, I think it was finally broken up on day 38 for unsustainability. At what point does that illegal behavior suddenly become legal or vice versa? It, it just seemed like a decision was made on day 38 and that was that. Well, no, I, I want to make very clear that a decision wasn't made on day 38. Yeah. This was a methodical process yeah. to break down this camp. And had that process not gone the way it did, 
I don't think we would have gotten the outcome that we did. It was of great benefit to be very communicative um, and to work with city partners to make sure that not only the lines of communication were clear with those, um, with those in the camp, but also amongst the city uh, entities as well. Had we just made a decision and said, okay, we're gonna you know, post and say, you gotta leave, it's time to go, and then we go in there two days later, we don't know what we would have gotten. Right. So I think it was a really good end state. It was longer than uh, a lot of folks were pleased with, but it was a really good end state in that we were able to clear out the camp with very little yeah. incident, and by that point, a lot of people had self-selected, and that's really what we wanted to happen. And a lot of the criticism were police, Portland police are not enforcing the laws down here. They're, the, all of these those things that we had just mentioned. But it is safe to say you guys were on top of this from day one watching. And, and was it a, a systematic or, or a um, systemic process to finally get to the point where you could break it up with the success that you did have? Yes, it was a very, yeah. uh, again, systemic and very methodical yeah. process that, that took place. There. People worry about uh, the precedent of policing a little bit when it comes to um, political beliefs. And there's so many people in Portland and so many have different uh, political beliefs. Is that what happened in this case with the mayor saying, you know what, hands off? Or was it, as you mentioned, they have their own, the federal officers or the ICE agencies have their own federal officers and they can deal with it. You know, I, I don't speak on behalf of the mayor, but I'll, I'll say from the public safety standpoint, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Um, again, we have to utilize the resources uh, that we have yeah. and they also have resources as well. So it really depends on who you speak to. I, you know, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole of, uh, people accuse, uh, accusing us or, or the mayor of, you know, taking sides and using us to influence any of that. Right. Again, we focus on the public safety piece, and I, I think that's how we got to the outcome that we did. Is there any, I don't want to say collateral damage, is there any concern of the, and you worked closely with the neighbors and the business owners in that neighborhood, uh, is there a relationship that will now have to continue because of what happened in the South Waterfront? Is that something that, hey, we worked with these people, and now we're going to continue to work with them to make sure they know uh, we're here when we need them? Well, I think relationships are important regardless. It just so happens yes. that this camp now yeah. ends up in, you know, a very prominent portion of the right. South Waterfront area. Right. But absolutely, I wouldn't call it collateral damage, but yeah. there's absolutely some trust building that has yeah. to occur. Um, because there are not only business owners, there were residents, there were uh, clients or patients that needed to get down to the yeah. hospital. I mean, so there are a lot of stakeholders that were down and are still in that South Waterfront yeah. area that need to be reassured that if this were to ever happen again, that their safety is a primary concern. All right, let's shift gears. We talked about this briefly before we went on the air. Oh, the sheriffs from 16 Oregon counties this week signing that letter calling for Oregonians to repeal that so-called sanctuary state law. It'll be put to a vote in November, so it's up to the voters anyway. Current law prohibits local law enforcement from arresting people whose only offense is being here illegally, federal immigration offense, haven't committed any other crimes. Uh, we're asking this because we, we want your opinion. Uh, we know you've said you won't weigh in on the vote and we're not gonna ask you of how you would vote on this, but do you think it hampers the ability to do police work as those 16 officers say, or does it just create an instance where more creativity has to be found with the police force? You know, I, I wanna put out there again, the Portland Police Bureau does not enforce federal civil immigration laws, period. Uh, our policies are in alignment with that. Uh, we train in accordance to that. Yep. And it is what it is as it relates to that. Uh, the 16 sheriffs that you are mentioning are, I want to point out, they're elected. Yeah. Electeds are politicians. They give their opinions. And whether their opinions are right or wrong are, or, or are backed by data or data, yeah. um, they're allowed to do that. Right. So with that said, given that I am not an elected official, I am not a politician, and I, am, uh, I was hired to do my job in a fair and impartial way, my focus is on where the numbers take us, where the data takes us. And if the data shows me that crimes are occurring in a particular portion of the city or right. wherever, that, that's where we focus. Right. Someone's mere presence does not escalate to alarm to me where I need to now focus and divert my resources because someone is here uh, existing, yeah. you know, based off of a 
a political discussion, sure, sure. if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Another big test for the police bureau. Early in August, when we had the right wing protesters affiliated with the Patriot Prayer Movement and the left wing protesters associated with the Antifa, they staged those dueling protests in Portland. I can only, I, I can only imagine what when the announcement was made that they were going to have this protest of, of the meetings that must have taken place. Police disbanded these protests at one point. Protesters claimed there were injuries and, and flashbang projectile. One, one claimed it hit him in the head. Afterward, you promised a full investigation into these complaints. What's the update? Is there one? Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're still pretty much in the same spot where we were. Yeah. Um, there were allegations of injuries. We don't know yet if they're um, as a result of law enforcement sure. action or some internal action. Everything that we've been made aware of has been referred to IPR, who yeah. does these investigations. Right. And I've said from day one, you know, if there were some lessons that need to be learned from that as far as how we handled it tactically, you know, we own it. I own it. We hold ourselves accountable uh, to that. So that those types of situations, there's not a, a cookie cutter way right. to deal with those tactically. They're very fluid and you have to deal with what you have when it's in front of you. That transparency is something that you had promised when you got first started on the job. Do you feel like it, it, it's working and, and that the community is receiving it as well as they should? You know what, I don't know because I, I know for a fact because I've been told this, you know, you're, and it's not a knock to anyone that sat in my chair sure. before me, right. but I've been told, you know, you're a lot more accessible than what, what we're used to. and that's because that's who I am, yeah. right? You know, I'm also a resident and that's what I expect as a taxpayer, I wanna know what's going on. Sure. And uh, I think now it's expected of me, which is fine, because I said I it would is. do it. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you know, understand that there's only so much that can be said. Yeah. Or if I'm telling you, you know, the facts as we know them today, yeah. You know, if you're unhappy with what I'm sharing with you, I'm all open for constructive feedback um, and dialogue. But, you know, let's be let's be congenial about yeah, it. Yeah. OK, two weeks ago on the Lars Larson show, talked about the police response uh, with that Patriot prayer movement and the Antifa movement and and your frustration with the protesters themselves not held accountable when they ignored police orders to disband. Let's take a quick listen to what you said and we'll talk about it on the other side. I tell people we hold ourselves accountable. If we did something wrong, we own it. I own it. We'll take it because we don't want to continue on doing the same thing over and over again if we can find ways to improve moving forward. But at what point is there accountability to not only acknowledge the law and say that lawlessness is not OK? That's what I mean in the change uh, in culture, because I, folk, it's, it's just and I'll use this analogy. I tell you, meet me after school at three o'clock. Right. <laughs> We're going to yeah. fight. Right. Yep. And I come with the intention to fight and then you get mad because I kicked your butt. And now you go back and you wail off and whine and complain because you got your butt kicked because you thought when you left that you were going to come and be the victor. And that didn't happen. Nobody's calling that. Why? All right. You took some heat for that schoolyard comment, but you said some people took that quote out of, out of context. A lot of people didn't. Some people did. What were you trying to say there? Let, let's, let's just get that right out. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, I say I'll own mine, yeah. right? If, if, I, if I misstep or do something out of turn, I will say that I used a poor choice of words. And here's why. Because I wasn't very clear in what I was trying to articulate, yeah. it allowed for what I was really trying to get across to be mischaracterized. Not at any given time would I uh, brag about officers using force. In fact, officers don't want to use force yeah, right. ever. Right. Um, and then I never said that officers kicked your butt. Right. So the point of my analogy was to really try to point out the irony behind the fact that here we are in the city of Portland and unfortunately the city has become a place known all over the country as the place to come and settle your differences mm -hmm. under the cover of First Amendment and the Constitution. We are all for, we fully support yep. peaceful demonstration, peaceful counter demonstration. We, we're here to protect, right, right? Those who are exercising their First Amendment rights. But the irony that I was trying to point out was, is that those who had showed up, most, not everybody, because there were peaceful demonstrators yeah. there um, on the, with counter protesting, there were peaceful, peaceful counter protesters. Yep. Um, there as well. But they came with the intent 
to confront. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people there who came with the intent to confront, to cause harm, to create violence. Um, we know that they did that not only uh, to those who they disagreed with on yeah. the other side yeah. of the street, but also internally. Uh, so, you know, and they had been used to being able to get away with that yeah. in previous um, occasions. And so now, the irony of saying, I'm coming to fight hate with hate is just unfathomable yeah. Yeah. to me. So that, that's what I was really trying to point out. It wasn't about uh, the officers kicked your butt or anything like that. It's really trying to point out that the community is tired mm -hmm of seeing our city as a place to come and hash out your differences, tear up um, you know, bus uh, buildings and yeah. everything yes. around it and then leave and go back yeah. to where you're from. Does it make it more of a challenge for officers to deal with these kind of things when, and, and these will be my words because we've had these discussions too, there are a certain group, or, or certain, group, certain groups are more interested in the conflict rather than the cause. Yes. They come with that intent. Does, does it make it tougher to police those situations? It makes it very difficult because, you know, and, and I, I got a lot of constructive feedback. You know, there were the, a large uh, group of constituents were yeah. very supportive. And then there were a small group that gave some really good constructive feedback uh, to my remarks. And a lot of it centered around the fact that they said, look, you know what, we feel that you're clumping us in with yeah. these folks that were out here causing all the damage and we were really there to peacefully demonstrate. And so my response to that is I understand their sentiment, but at the same time, we need you when we ask you to leave or even before that, move up on the sidewalk. Right. We need you to do that because that's the opportunity to self-select right. and to differentiate yourself from those crowds there. Otherwise, we don't have the ability to go through and pull, you know, and try to discern who is who. Right. So in response to that, and I, and I still say that to this day, and kind of going back to your original question, of how do you deal with that? You know, we're open. What are the alternatives? Yeah. You know, what do you suggest that we do mm -hmm. to make it safe for you so you don't get caught up yeah. with those who are there with the intention of causing that sort of violent disruption. Such a challenge and then met with that, that commitment to transparency too. I think those go really well hand in hand together. We'll take a short break. We've still got a lot to touch on and stay with us. We're gonna have more with Portland Police Chief Daniel Outlaw after this.